This is the full glory of the sun and seen in hydrogen alpha. Lots of details, and look at that prominence on the bottom right. It's massive. What's that thing right next to the prominence? Holy shit, that's the Earth. That prominence is several times larger than the Earth. The size of the sun is mind-boggling. That was the sun during the summer solstice on June 21st, 2023. Captured with my LUNT40 ASI 120mm mini guide cam and post-processed in AutoStacker 3 and Photoshop. And in this video, I'll quickly go over my setup, my gear, and my post-processing steps. The gear and software that I used in this video are my LUNT40 ASI 120mm mini guide cam, my AVX mount, a laptop with fire capture, and for post-processing, it was done in AutoStacker 3 to stack the images and Photoshop to sharpen and colorize the sun. I'm still practicing my compositing skills, so I'm going to skip that in this video, but I promise once I get a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable, I'll make another video covering how to composite so that the prominences on the sun look just as good as the sun surface itself. So let's hop outside and look at my setup. I set up my LUN40 on my AVX mount in my driveway which by the way is about 12 years old and is still going strong. I then insert my ASI 120mm mini guide cam into the di diagonal and plug it into my laptop. Then I do a quick polar alignment on my mount using the hand controller. Of course it's daytime and my house is in the way so I'm really guesstimating where the celestial north pole is but I'm pretty close. And once it's aligned, I use my controller to find the sun. And then I center the sun using the Teleview Soul Searcher. Watch my last video for a closer look at how that works. Then on my laptop, I turn on Fire Capture and connect my camera. You'll notice that I'm exposing at about 2 milliseconds, and I have a gamma turned on at gain 1. I actually meant it to be gain 0. The gamma helps brighten the features on the sun, allowing me to more easily focus. Then I use the helical focuser to focus. You'll notice that the sun moves about in the field of view. This is my least favorite part about a helical focuser, and hopefully I'll upgrade that in the future. And once I have some focus, I recenter it using my controller. And then I zoom into about 200% so that I can see some of the surface details more clearly. And then I continue to focus by turning the helical focuser until I'm fully satisfied. Before going back to 100%, I scroll over because I want to take a closer look at that massive prominence to the bottom right. It looks incredible. It kind of looks like a dragon. Alright, now I want to take a flat. I take a somewhat translucent double layered plastic bag and cover the lunt to diffuse the sunlight coming through. Then on fire capture, I increase my exposure to about 621 milliseconds until my histogram is near the 60 to 70 percent range, which lets me see the dust very clearly. And then I click on the take flats button and take 25. Then I take off the plastic bag and set my exposure back to around 2 milliseconds. I decrease that later on during my actual videos. If I turn the flats back off, keep an eye on the big bit of dust at here. If I turn the flats back on, it disappears like magic. Now I want to take a video of the top part of the sun, and with an exposure of about 1.787 milliseconds, zero gain and the gamma turned off, I take a recording of 1000 frames in .sur format, SER. It records at 15 FPS because my laptop is pretty slow, but that's alright. Once that's done, I turn on gamma at the same exposure and set it to about 74 so that my histogram is around the 90 to 100% mark, and my goal is to overexpose it. This setting is something I still need to play with and try and perfect because maybe 90 to 100% is a little too much, maybe I need to go down to 70 or 80 or 85. This is something that I wish I had more time to play with and I will hopefully get more time to play with in the future. My goal is to capture the prominence on the very edges as nicely as possible. And I also take about a thousand frame recording of the gamma full sun. And my goal is to use it in a composite shot, which I won't cover in this video. My plan is to just make it as simple as possible. And with that said, I'm done with fire capture. I'm going to pack up. Let's go inside and go into Photoshop. 
All right, so here are all the recordings that I took. You can see that I have a couple of different versions that I tried to rename for better organization, such as before refocus, before second refocus, etc. And I think the version that I'm going to process is this one. I've gone through all of them, and I think this one is the best one that I have of Top of the Sun. I will plan on later on doing the bottom part of the sun as well and then compositing it. Now, but we'll take a look at this using Sir Player. And this is what it looks like. Let's decrease it a little bit. So it's just a, a thousand frame video in monochrome. You can kind of see the prominence here. There's some prominence here. It's a little bit harder to see, but you can see lots of the surface details. You can see some of the, the Newton rings as well. Um, which wasn't taken out by the flats, unfortunately. And then if we look at one with gamma, you see that it's much brighter, harder to see the surface details, but look at the prominences. You can see so much more details there. Um, there's also like a piece like flying off the sun here. It's, it's really hard to see, but it's there um, with some good processing someone should be able to tune them out, uh, bring them out. Uh, and of course, one thing about the gamma is that you can see this little dust spots here uh, because I didn't take the flat to accommodate the gamma version. The, those dust spots still remain. Close that, I'll process that later. But for this video, for this purpose, I'm going to process this one in Auto Stacker, which I have open here. And I'm going to just click and drag it here. And we have it open here. So as I mentioned, this is going to be like a really lazy processing. Normally, you'd want to put this into PIP and then uh, align the sun to every frame and then use Auto Stacker to stack just the best frames and then use Astro Surface or Registax and, and process the wavelets there to get a really sharp image of the sun. Um, I am trying to find a way to do something very quickly, so I'm skipping that and just doing everything in Auto Stacker because my AVX, although it wasn't perfectly polar aligned, it was really good. It actually kept the sun in center for a while, and I find that Auto Stacker can stack the stack it pretty well. Uh, and in the, the options here, I'm stacking the best 35%, so it'll be 350 frames. Um, I'm keeping everything else the default auto size. I'm selecting sharpened here, so it'll take a little bit longer for processing. But this is what I'll actually work on instead of the normal stack. Again, which is also pretty lazy, but it works for me. Uh, and then it'll save it in a folder. You can also use Drizzle 1.5, 3x, and even 2x so that your image becomes larger and maybe you'll get some more details, makes it easier to process. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, for this demo, I'm gonna leave that as off. Uh, you can play with these and see what you come up with. Um, I, I find that Drizzle can, be, can go either way. So I'm gonna click on Analyze. All right, it analyzed all the frames, and you can see that I have some really good frames here, and the top 35% will be like here, I think. That's, that's 25, so like 35 will be like here. So it'll process like all of the frames in that area. And then on this window here, I selected my alignment point size to 96, and then click on place AP grid. The reason I did 96 is because otherwise they become, like you have like a million of them, and I, you don't need a million of them. And even then, this gives me 423, which is a lot. But, you know, it's good enough. Uh, min brightness is 45. You can change it to 60. Place 65. Place AP grid. It doesn't really do much. But, anyway, this, is, this will still process really fast. So I'm going to do stack. All right, that took just a few seconds. You can see all the steps here. And what that did is it created another folder here. I have an old one here. Um, and you get two versions of this. So the conv is the... Uh, the sharpened file. You can look at the unsharpened file here. This is what it looks like. You can see the prominence here. Um, these ones are a little bit harder to see. And you can see pretty good amount of surface details. Normally you can take this to Registax and process it there and get some wavelets done and then before taking it to Photoshop. But if I look at the next image here, so this is the sharpened version of this and I actually kind of like how it looks sharpened um, before I even have to take it to Registax. So it's kind of like a time-saving scheme that I have going. Um, 
makes it easier if I want to do a time lapse later, which I really do. And you can see some more details on the prominence, lots of details on the solar surface itself. And overall, I think it's a, it's a pretty good starting point uh, for the demo purposes here to take it into Photoshop and work with it there. So let's set to Photoshop and sharpen it a little bit more and then colorize it. So I have the image of the sun open in Photoshop and we have one layer here. And if you look at the channels, you'll see that it's just grayscale because the image was taken in monochrome with a monochrome camera. So the first thing we want to do is go to image mode and change this to RGB color. And what this will do is it creates the RGB channels for us. And they all look exactly the same because it's the same data. Once we have this, this should be the first step that you do because otherwise it'll want to flatten your image. So now we'll go back to layers and I like working on uh, the different parts of my processing in different layers so that I can easily undo and manipulate them separately. So you can duplicate this by right clicking and clicking on duplicate layer or you can do control J which will create a copy as well. And I'm going to in this layer uh, make my image sharper uh, before we do the colorization. So we'll go to filter, sharpen and unsharp mask. And you can see that it's already a little bit sharper with my defaults, which is 300%, one radius, one pixel radius, and threshold of nine levels. Uh, you can, of course, go crazy and then see what it would look like there. It's just way too much. Whoops. Let's do 300. And then I like doing between like one and like 1.5 or something, which I find to be sufficient enough. So I'll leave it at 1.1. You can preview before and after. You can always zoom in to see because uh, of my setup, I don't have the really close up surface details that a lot of other people get. And maybe one day I'll get there. But with this image, this is uh, as good as I can do for now with my processing steps here. I'm just going to move this up to like 1.3, 1 1.4. 1 okay, press OK. All right, so that's done. And you can see like the prominences here they look really cool. This one is really nice. It's like almost facing us. Um, so it's a little bit brighter. There's prominences up here as well. Harder to see. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, add some color to this. And the way to do this is to do it with a curves adjustment. The two ways you can do this is uh, if you click on the layer, click on image, adjustments and then you do curves uh, you can do control M as well and you get this little pop-up but I like doing things on different layers as I mentioned uh, so I have this adjustments tab here I have curves here you can also go to layer new adjustment layer and do curves and it'll give you a new curves layer this way I can copy and paste it to other images uh, or and manipulate it or get rid of it in the future if I need to so I just keep on a separate layer and once we click this we have uh, this window come up here and we need to adjust each of the RGB values individually. I have default values that I use so I'll try and drag these uh, points to there but I'll just put them into the input. So I have it's about like here uh, for the red you can see it looks pinkish so I have um, like 80 and whoops 80 and 58 is usually what I set mine to uh, and I do adjust it depending on how my capture went um, for green it goes down a little bit so this will be um, 132 and 109 so it looks more pink and then for blue blue goes down way more so it looks more orangey and the values I use for that is uh, 177 and 92 you can see that dragging it is pretty I'm pretty close to it and this is what I get. You can see that the prominences are pretty visible. Uh, the ones on top here are not as visible. And one trick I use to see what I'm working with is if you go to the red channel, you go all the way to the top, you can see like all the different um, reds that we've captured in our image. And you can see that there's a cool prominence here disappearing, but it's so thin. Um, I will try and make this appear in a composite shot later on, but for the purposes of this video, we're just doing the sun, just a sing single video um, processing, and I'm just going to put my values back here, so 70 and 158. There you go. So this is what it looks like. 
So this is just the first step. I like doing a second curves layer because then I can just adjust all of it uh, and make it a little bit more contrasty. So I'll just do like go up this way, you know, make sure this doesn't go up too much. Pause. And then this slight S curve uh, makes the sun a little bit more yellow, a little bit more natural, and the colors start to pop. And because I have these on different layers, I can you know always turn them off and see what it looks like without it. Of course, that's the color. So, so this is you know like a really quick and easy uh, processing of the sun using Auto Stackard and Photoshop, it's an unsharp mask and a couple of curves layers. I think I'll be able to make this sharper if I take this into Registax or Astrosurface and play with the wavelets. But for now, I'm happy with this and this will be my final product for the video. Uh, but in the video, uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you some of the composite shots that I've been working on so that the uh, prominences around the sun pop a little bit more and you can play with the data set that you have. If this video was somewhat helpful, I'd appreciate if you subscribe, like, comment, share, etc, etc. As I mentioned, I didn't go over my compositing steps. The image that you saw at the beginning of the video was actually a composite. That's why the prominence looked a little bit brighter and a little bit more detailed. But if you look closely enough, you'd know that it was a really shoddy job. And that's because I'm still playing with my compositing skills, trying to make sure that I can process the sun itself and the prominence separately. And then when I composite them, they look uh, as good as possible. Before we go to the end of the video collage, I want to officially announce merch for my website for nastronomy.com. Right now it's just t-shirts, but I've been doing stuff on Nastronomy for well over a decade, and this is the first time that I've decided to try and like sell something. So if you hop to nastronomy.com shop and check out the several designs that I'm working on, that I have worked on. Uh, my favorite is a new moon schedule in the back, and I'm planning on updating that every month or so, covering the following year. Uh, I'm working on a few other concepts as well, uh, which I'm hoping to launch later in the year. Profits from those sales will go straight into growing my channel, into my outreach, and some of it will help me on my trip to Texas next year for the total solar eclipse, which I am hoping to live stream, assuming that the Airbnb where I'm staying has adequate internet. Uh, which the comments say that they do, but who knows. Thanks for sticking with me, thanks for learning with me. Until next time, clear skies.